Moments ago, that in the last 24 hours, it has seen the most cases being reported since the virus started. Outside of China, there are now 191 confirmed cases in 24 countries. This comes as medical professionals try and treat the disease. San Antonio-based Xenex Disinfection Services has developed a robot that uses UV light to disinfect hospital rooms and says its devices are being used to clean facilities with suspected cases of coronavirus. Joining us now is the CEO of the company, Morris Miller. Mr. Miller, nice to have you. Uh, Thank you. How many of your robots are currently in service at various hospitals or other facilities that might need them? So we have, we have thousands of robots in use in over 500 facilities around the world. Um, we've been contacted by about 200 of them that are using them uh, to disinfect emergency rooms uh, and other spaces where they have suspected coronavirus cases while they're doing the test to determine whether they're actually coronavirus or not. And how quickly can one of your robots actually uh, dispatch with cleaning a room? So a, a typical hospital room will get disinfected in a five-minute cycle. And since we started the company, we've done about 21 million of those cycles. Uh, we, uh, during the Ebola crisis, we were asked to test against Ebola. It takes one minute to kill Ebola. Um, we've tested against other coronaviruses. Obviously, the Wuhan coronavirus is an original. Nobody has seen it before. Nobody has it. But if you remember the Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome that was out a few years ago, we tested against that. And it's very fast to uh, uh, kill that. And this is a very so similar enveloped virus. Go ahead. We're watching company produce video, video, I would assume, where a nurse seems to have inputted certain things. And then what is that? What is the machine actually doing there? What is what is going on that we're watching right now? Right. So up, up until now, really, the only way to disinfect a room was with chemistry or with old mercury light bulb based devices. This was the first non mercury light bulb based device. It's a xenon lamp. Uh, the nurse would input the data and then they would allow it to pulse. It pulses at very high intensity and it's across the entire germicidal spectrum. So literally the pathogens, and these are things like C. diff, MRSA, vancomycin resistant staph. These are antibiotic resistant pathogens and the broad spectrum ultraviolet light deactivates the DNA within those pathogens so they can't make patients sick and they won't kill them anymore. That's amazing. I mean, can you can you do more with those robots? Can you, can they also help actually serve patients, dispense medicine and other things that may be more dangerous for human to human contact? Uh, there, there, there's other, believe it or not, there's plenty of other robots that will move around the hospital and deliver medications and other things like that. We're very focused on disinfecting hospitals. Uh, these are used around the world in pharmaceutical manufacturing facilities. So the biggest pharma companies in the world use this. And in those situations, as opposed to having it manually moved around a room, it will automatically move through a pharmaceutical manufacturing facility and disinfect the clean room. So this is what you use to keep a clean room clean. That's how you disinfect it. Who are your manufacturers? Is it, uh, is it outsourced? Where does it happen? And uh, how much could you ramp up capacity if we ran into these sorts of situations again? Right. So the, 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 first of all, they're made here in the United States. They're actually made in San Antonio, Texas, uh, where we're headquartered and uh, we have a dedicated group of people. Right now, we were on one shift um, as uh, demand ramps up and down. I mean, we'll periodically see this from our top hospitals like Mayo Clinic or MD Anderson. When they need robots, we can go up to three shifts a day and produce them and get the robots out there. There's really no limitation to how many we can produce or are willing to produce. Um, it's a matter of being responsive to the market when the market needs them. I think the coronavirus has served as a great wake up call to remind people, you know, 6,000 people a day in the United States get infections when they go to the hospitals and about 374 die. So the last numbers I saw this morning were approximately 500 people that have divide, died from coronavirus. That's basically a day and a half, almost two days of what standard happens in the United States. And when you look at our, our customers like Honor Health that's deployed them across their hospital system, they've, you know, right. they're, they're disinfecting 90 percent plus of the rooms and they've reduced their infection rates as they report to us more than 80 percent.
Just curious from a business standpoint, obviously it's great to have uh, growth in your product. You get an installed base out there, though. What are you selling into the product that can be a recurring revenue stream if you finally do meet the demand in the hospital system, for example? So, uh, good, good question. Um, every business, not every business, but basically the business I'm involved in have a recurring revenue stream, and there is that for the robot. So, we talk about it like it's a robot, but it's really a complete service. We go to the hospitals, we deploy them, we help them develop standard operating protocols, we'll help them work out the kinks in the system. Our goal is to see that hospital report infection rate reductions, and we're not happy till they do that. So it's a complete service, and there is a associated recurring revenue charge for that, and that keeps us with account managers that are deeply involved with our infection preventionists, the CEOs of the hospital, the heads of quality, to make sure that they're getting the benefit of their robot utilization. Oshner in New Orleans is a good example. They deployed our robots. We worked with them. 90 days later, they published, not we published, they published a 48% reduction in infection rate that astonished everybody. I, mean, I, I would imagine they're pretty expensive machines. Can hospitals around the world afford this to make it a standard of care? Uh, so, so far, the answer to that is yes. The, the machines cost about $100,000. They're in Ecuador. They're all over Europe. They're in the U.K. We partnered with Terumo in Japan. The real way to think about it is how many rooms can you do per day with a robot? Our top hospitals do 65 rooms a day. Their cost per room is probably $250 or $3. If you only use it maybe 12 rooms or 15 rooms a day, your cost per room disinfection might be $6. When you compare that to an hour and a half of labor, you still have these amazing housekeepers that are going into dangerous situations. They're doing all of the cleaning, but then they rely on us to do the disinfection in a very fast manner. And the typical disinfection cycle is about five minutes. So we can get the disinfection done. We leave the cleaning to them and the patients get a much safer environment.